Domain names can be sold for millions of dollars. So why would My Neighborhood Zoo have the URL zoo.org? The Woodland Park Zoo, based out of Seattle, is a fine zoo. But it's not the largest by endowment or size, and it rarely appears in lists of the country's best zoos. It's unusual, then, that it would have the shortest, most convenient URL of any zoo in the world. My research suggests the story of how this website came to be registered during a pivotal era for the early internet. The internet protocol was invented in 1974 for communication between computers in a network identified by IP addresses. To make this even easier, the domain name system, or DNS, was created in 1983 so that websites could be registered with memorable domains that were mapped to IP addresses. Because these records are necessarily public, we can look up the information for the zoo.org domain registration directly. Zoo.org maps to 72.5.188.69. You can of course access the page directly with this IP address. The registry for zoo.org also reveals that the website has been registered continuously since 1995. But if DNS was introduced in 1983, why did it take so long for zoo.org to be registered? 12 years. And why was it the Woodland Park Zoo that made the registration? The internet protocol by itself only routes generic messages between two computers. So it was mostly used at research organizations. This is very apparent in the earliest domain names, which were pioneering companies in research universities. The World Wide Web still needed to be invented. This is a specific application of the internet protocol technology that is so fundamental, it's hard to imagine there was a world before it was released into the public domain in 1993. The World Wide Web introduced the web page, where you could organize resources to be accessed over a network and with information and links to other pages. This idea kicked off the internet revolution as people and companies started creating their websites and saw the value of information being added to the World Wide Web. So to answer the question of when, before the World Wide Web, nobody would register zoo.org since the concept of an organization having a homepage actually had not been invented yet. Why was it the Woodland Park Zoo specifically that registered zoo.org? One missing piece ties our story almost all together. In 1995, Microsoft was already well established as a software powerhouse, making the Windows operating system out of Redmond, Washington, across the lake from Seattle. In the famous Internet Tidal Wave memo from May of that year, Bill Gates explained the potential he saw in the Internet and Microsoft's strategy for making itself an integral part of how people use the web. Using the Internet Archive, we can see archived versions of zoo.org from this era. In January 1997, on the expanded credits page, there's a donation from Microsoft. Also, with a little bit of external research, I found that several of the volunteers credited were working at Microsoft in 1997. Furthermore, since the earliest snapshot in November 1996, there are graphics recommending Microsoft's suite of internet products. But this is all the evidence that I found. There simply aren't that many hard records about such a niche topic. So, I can only offer my speculation. As part of Microsoft's objective for commercializing the internet ecosystem, it sponsored the Woodland Park Zoo in building a website that would not only benefit the local organization, but also help demonstrate the internet's amazing potential to provide useful information for anything from educational information about animals to planning a weekend trip at the zoo. I personally think this collaboration also explains why the domain name zoo.org was chosen. The Woodland Park Zoo was actually not the first on the World Wide Web. If we look at the ZooNet's Gold Paul Awards page, which is a hyperlink, there's a lot of other zoo websites listed, many of them as early as 1996. However, other zoo websites tend to use really long-winded hierarchical domain names when people thought this is what the structure of the internet would be. Microsoft's involvement could have meant not only the resources to register a new domain, but also the foresight to go with something concise. The Woodland Park Zoo has continued to quietly be at the forefront of technology. It was the first zoo with a mobile app, and it uploaded videos to YouTube within just 18 months after the first ever video on that platform, which of course famously also takes place at a zoo. Microsoft, meanwhile, is still involved in making computer products and involved in the Woodland Park Zoo. When I went there, there is a Microsoft pollinator garden, an open air viewing area with several types of flowers to teach people about supporting local pollinators. During my visit, it was completely empty, but the legacy of their collaboration will continue to surprise zoo-goers forever. Thank you.